I quote treated someone who the Chrisman said, is there anyone in the world who both A, has a decent understanding of principles of complex systems and B, thinks the Ozempic craze is going to end well? <laughs> And I quote tweeted him and said, Ozempic is fooling people just as COVID treatments did. Even those who understand complex systems and other contexts can be convinced that the stakes are too high to think for themselves when it comes to medicine and health. In fact, the stakes are too high not to. So I stand by this, right? Um, the number of people who are otherwise um, careful, critical thinkers who think of themselves as heterodox, who think of themselves as um, not following the herd, who when it comes to things uh, that come wrapped in a health or medical package, go, oh, well, okay, if the experts say it, then I guess I guess we'll go, is, um, is surprising and saddening and dangerous. Um, so, this week we had, uh, if you'll show my screen, Zach, uh, the Times of London uh, publishes a piece called Weight Loss Jab Cuts Heart Disease Deaths by 20%. Semaglutide, also known as Ozempic or Wegovy, is set to transform treatments for cardiovascular disease, but a change in guidelines is needed to allow routine prescriptions. So I'm going to just walk us through a little bit of this paper, and then I'm going to show you what I did to find the actual research in question and, and what, what lies there. Um, Millions of middle-aged Brits, so this is the Times of London, so it's a British paper. Millions of middle-aged Britons should should be, should be, routinely prescribed weight loss injections to cut their risk of heart attacks and strokes by a fifth, according to a trial set to revolutionize medical practice. The largest study ever into semaglutide found the drug cuts heart disease deaths by about 20%, even if people don't lose weight. The results presented at the European Congress on Obesity in Venice were hailed as the biggest medical breakthrough since the introduction of statins in the 1990s. Professor John Deanfield of University College London, who was also the study author, said it was clear the drugs target uh, the drugs, quote, target the underlying biology of chronic diseases independently of their effect on weight loss. This suggests they can be used to treat several conditions beyond obesity and diabetes, which is all they are currently approved for. They were originally being um, developed for diabetes, that's right, and then it was discovered that they were apparently effective in weight loss. Um, and so I will, of course, link to this article, but let me just go to a couple of things. Um, uh, so semaglutide is manufactured by Novo Nordisk. Uh, he, this is again... Uh, Dean Field, the lead author on the study, who's also a professor of cardiology, added that the drug could also be, quote, added onto pre-existing therapy for heart problems, including statins and blood pressure medication, with almost all of those in the trial also taking statins. So that struck me as surprising. Um, and this we will come back to that point. Um, there were already people in the Treasury thinking about the savings to the economy because of the opportunity to boost productivity. You need to get your workforce as fit as possible. And nothing says fit like inject this into your thigh. <laughs> At this week's European Congress on Obesity, delegates can be heard excitedly talking about a future in which millions of adults take the medications as a preventive measure. Sounds like not my kind of conference. And finally, only a fraction of NHS patients eligible for weight loss jabs are currently able to get a hold of them, meaning, the ro meaning that rolling the jabs out to millions seems like a pipe dream. Just that phrase right there. Rolling the jabs out to millions seems like a pipe dream. That is not just shades of COVID. Rolling the jabs out to millions. So they are, they are trying to create this excitement around this. this but there's scarcity. Can you even get it? There's scarcity. It's just like there were with the vaccines. And this would be this would not be what it's developed for. Of course, it wasn't even developed for weight loss. It developed for diabetes. But now it's a weight loss drug. But oh my God, it has these amazing effects on heart disease. Let's, like, let's do this, right? Okay, so um, this struck me as um, a by turns hysterical and um, dishonestly written article. And I, of course, went to get... Um, wait, wait. One red flag I want to introduce you. Just to. one? <laughs> yeah. Well, there are a bunch, but yeah. the idea that Ozempic, or whatever this stuff is, yeah. some meglutide. Semaglutide. Semaglutide. Mm -hmm. That this has this effect, even if people don't lose weight, it's just a, it's like a health improver. Um, not buying. Sure. Um, that, you know, if, if it caused you to lose weight, there would be some cost and you could then have a, you would have a mechanism whereby it might reduce 
strain on your heart potentially. And mm -hmm. we could talk about the net effect, but the idea that it's just sort of generally health improving seems preposterous. And then there's this point that you make about the, the majority of the people in the trial were on statins. Did I get that correctly? Well, I'll, I'll show you what I found, but okay. that's, that's what was claimed in the Times of London article. Well, yeah. I will just say, um, my guess is it will be hard to dig this up, but that does suggest a mechanism where something that is health negative could be made to look health positive. Did that's I get it? it? Uh, well, I, I think so. There's, I, there's, there's no evidence, yeah. but that's, that is exactly what I think is going on. As incomplete and appears to be fraudulent as this abstract is, there's one line in here, which I'm surprised they included because I, I can't even like, let, let me read this one line here. This again from the uh, abstract, you can show my screen here. The reduction in the major adverse coronary event rates by semaglutide versus placebo was similar in patients who lost more than 5% and those who lost less than 5% or gained weight. Major adverse coronary event rates among patients on semaglutide were similar in the two weight loss categories, whereas patients on placebo who lost more than 5% of weight had higher major adverse coronary event rates than those who lost less than 5% or gained weight. So just to put that in English without me stumbling over this stupid acronym, assume, put aside the semaglutide entirely. Now we're talking about the placebo groups. Hopefully they get, they're getting nothing. They're getting shots of saline in their thigh once a week. That's it. And they're getting, maybe they're, maybe they're being handed statins, right? Um, if they lost weight, their risk of heart attack went up. But if they didn't lose weight or they gained weight, uh, they, or I don't know if they went up. If you compare the rates of heart attacks, of major heart events in people who are on nothing but shots of salt, gaining weight was correlated with having fewer heart attacks. Losing weight, losing 5% or more of your body mass in this study, if you weren't on their fancy drug, was associated with more heart attacks. What the hell is that? Yeah, what the hell is that? So, uh, it just, it, it brings all of it into question. Yeah, then. it sure does. It sure does. And, you know, strange things happen. But on the other hand, you've got an experiment that you can't evaluate. You have the impression that you've been handed a method section, but even multiple descriptions of the same method right. can't, don't allow you to deduce. I mean, how often do you get that? Like, right. oh, we got three, th oh, the same select trial. Okay, let's see. 17,604 patients. Yeah. I guess it was the same The, the ages were 45 years and up, and yeah. yeah, it was good to replace over four years. And like, oh, but then the similarities stop, even though they're exactly the same. Here's the New York Times on semaglutide um, this last month. Uh, it introduced Ozempic to the world. Now it must remake itself. Novo Nordisk's factories work nonstop turning out Ozempic and Wagobi. They turn out both. It's blockbuster weight loss drugs, but the Danish company has far bigger ambitions. So I'm not even going to go there. You can give me back my screen here for a moment. Um, so that prompted me to wonder who the conference's sponsors are. Oh, no. Three major sponsors. Novo Nordisk is one of them. Wow. That's it. So, Okay. <laughs> Um, two things. Yep. Conference is sponsored by the manufacturer of this, uh, economic blockbuster drug. You know what I didn't look into is, um, who helped fund the select trial. I right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, but okay. We've now seen the same trick twice. We covered something. Oh Yeah. What was that? There was another one of these things where a conference led to a yeah. major headline. Yeah. Um, and I looked this up. You mentioned this before I looked this up. On March 20th of this year, in episode 217 of Darkers, we discussed some research coming out of the American Heart Association's conference in Chicago that purported to find, well, so the, I think it was the Daily Mail further butchered already really bad research and claimed that sunbathing for just one day increases your risk of heart disease. And then I looked at some other abstracts and um, some of the, the research at this conference said that intermittent fasting increases your risk of heart disease. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> right. I mean, just, I had a family member send, send me that. Right. I know. I know. Uh, sent, sent me too. Um, but this this work that we've been talking about today it seems to be of a similar stripe in at least in at least one way in that it's this like a so-called science journalist goes to a conference 
sees a talk. Apparently there's a big brew. There's nothing in the abstracts to tell me that that paper landed. Like that paper looks unimpressive and I'm not even compelled that even if all of the rest of the errors that we already talked about were true, that the statistics that they did demonstrate what they say they demonstrate. And right. I'm, I didn't, I'm not even going there, right? Like, but even if you take all of that at face value, this, you know, breathless, anticipatory, oh my God, what we're going to need to do is get ozempic into the thighs of everyone as a preventative measure just like we have statins in everyone now like we need to increase the the pharmacopoeia of every britain in this case like how did you go from presumably science journalism 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 uh to writing a piece that is a hundred percent an argument to increase the bottom line of Novo Nordisk stockholders. Right. But that's it. Uh, okay. Uh, science journalists, not the sharpest tools in the shed at the moment. And the idea, if, if you were these clever pharma folks, yeah. then you would love an idea where you could put on something that was a conference. I'm sure these people look very academic and scientific as they go about their conferencing and the abstracts look very abstracty, you know, and the, you know, Hey, there's a method section. You can see what they did and I don't really get it. And I haven't noticed that three papers describe the same experiment differently. Right. But whatever the, the point is, this is, is it's cargo cult science in conference form. And the idea yes. is it bypasses the normal process right mm -hmm. the normal process you know even peer review which is a cruddy crappy captured process but even peer review is bypassed by conference modality in which mm -hmm. stuff that is more preliminary and dynamic yep. is happening and so if you invite the science journalists in and it's like oh well you're you know not only are you going to get to report on these cool results but you're going to be kind of you're part of the first. process yeah. of, you mm -hmm. know how we're sorting this stuff out this is you know this is cutting edge right and so the conference yep. results in the presentation of completely incomplete stuff that is scientifically invalid because you couldn't reproduce those methods if you tried you don't know what they mean right right and the point is you know well the conclusion is obvious i mean we've got a problem don't we Will the factories be able to produce this stuff quick enough? I mean, we could lose people. Jabs and thighs, guys. Right. That's what we need. That's Jabs in the thighs. Jabs and thighs, because you know what? This stuff, for reasons we can't fully explain, we acknowledge that, but this stuff makes you healthier. Yep, right? it sure does. This is that kind That's of stuff. That's the last stuff. It's health stuff. Yeah, yeah, like the last stuff, except the last stuff didn't turn out in the end. But well, was... no, if you add the last stuff to this stuff, then you're definitely then you're better de off. Oh, man, so mm -hmm. healthy. And we got some stuff for you tomorrow. It's coming up. Stay tuned. I bet that stuff even is more stuffy than this stuff. Yeah, but you definitely want to keep taking the current stuff and the last stuff as well. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't want to, you know, you don't want to right. lapse on your the past stuff. No, 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 no. Where all your you health all You stuff. would be dead if you hadn't been taking that stuff. Yeah, right. I know I, many people are. <laughs> Good point. Yes. <laughs> Killer point. Thank you. It's an unfortunate <laughs> phrasing on my part, but, um, but all right. So I get it. They've got a trick. The trick is the, the cargo cult conference, which is used to go directly to the journalists. And of course we've seen a thousand versions of this where yes. the idea is pharma ads are used to buy influence over news organizations. So they don't report about adverse events and other awkward phenomena coming out of drugs, yes. right? That's one version. Another version is, Oh, we're going to put on a conference and the, you know, it's the, Hey, do you know what side your bread is buttered on conference? <laughs> <laughs> well, also, Oh, it was in Venice. Oh, those poor people. They had to spend four days in Venice in May. Oh, geez. You're <laughs> right. Yeah. You're right. You're just lucky to be at the, do you know which side your bread is buttered on? Absolutely are. Venice. Venice is lovely. In May? My oh. God, it's perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I almost wish I could go. But um, it's over. Yeah. The problem is, I the do. The bread know. has already been buttered the, and you didn't get any. Yeah. It's been margarine, it's what it's been. But <laughs> yeah. But okay. So they got this phony conference bullshit. Yes, they do. And it's used to create the impression of a scientific discovery that never happened. And that's where we are. Um, and I would just say that what we are watching is the proliferation of tactics, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody is now on to the fact that the journals have been captured, right? We've had defections. Editors and yes. chiefs of journals mm -hmm. have said, you can't trust what's in these things because they're captured by the company. So then now they've moved on to a different mode, right? 
So what's happening to the what what has happened to the journals is happening to the trials is happening yes, to yes. the conferences in which the trials are being covered is and, happening to the funding is therefore happening to the people who are calling themselves scientists. Yes, yeah, exactly. And the point is, it becomes like a one hand washes the other. You know, the journalists reflect well on the scientists who don't deserve to be reflected well on, and the scientists are uh, bringing the the journalists in on you know their research, which is how mm -hmm. they're making their way in the world and the whole thing is just theater it is i i, I guess i want to flag i mean this whole thing this whole segment has been a flag but at the point that your neighbors mentioned that of course they're in semaglutide because that's what you are you're i'm in statin i'm in semaglutide that's just what we do remember this yeah like i wasn't I, I never I never trusted statins. I, ne I, I, I knew that there was a problem there from the beginning. I'd never paid a lot of attention, but uh, but I saw it start to I saw doctors start to try to um, give them to my dad, I believe. Yep. Um, and I was like, nah, I don't think so. Um, but I wasn't paying attention to this this level of of the clinical I, I, the clinical trials and such at all. I don't know how that unfolded, but I think I really believe, given that Times of London piece, that we are seeing in kind of you know it's the opposite of time dilation, it's time crunch. Um, that that is going to happen. That that they're pushing for semaglutide to become the statins tomorrow's statins, and. I have just unearthed in a couple of crappy abstracts in a 500 page compendium of abstracts at a conference in a beautiful European city for the last four days. Um, all of the evidence that they are currently willing to offer uh, by which they're going to fast forward this into your medicine cabinet and well, your thigh and like, don't accept it and don't into do it. your, into your mind. Yes. What they are doing is they are creating headline, seemingly headline worthy science right. out of pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. And so the point is they're going yes. straight to the headline. And once yes. the headline has told you, hey, you know what? We have a problem. We do not know if these factories are going to be able to produce enough of this stuff that you'll be able to get your hands on it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're lucky, who knows? You might be able to get some. Right. Let me just remind us of... Um, these two quotes from this Times of London article that I read before. At this week's European Congress on Obesity, delegates can be heard excitedly talking about a future in which millions of adults take the medications as a preventive measure. One thing, delegates? Like scientific conferences don't have delegates. Yeah. Political conferences have delegates. So I, I don't know what the word delegates is doing there. And maybe that tells us something about what is happening. Um, and then only a fraction of NHS patients eligible for weight loss jabs are currently able to get a hold of them. Meaning that rolling the jabs out to millions seems like a pipe dream. Uh -huh. Yeah, you people are smoking crack. Yeah. You need to keep it to yourselves. Yeah. That's the kind of pipe dream you're having. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well said. Yeah, that's very, very frustrating. Um, they're going to hurt a lot of people with this stuff. 